Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to learn about how you can share a power app with internal users or external users. What are the different options that you have? How you can share different type of data connections or data sources and licensing requirement. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, I am Deepak Srivastava. Welcome to my channel. So today's video is all about sharing your app. So as we know, once we create our app, we would like to share it with other users so they can use the app and the functionality. And there are multiple options or ways that are available that you can use to share your app with internal users or external users. So let's start with internal user first and then we will jump on to the external users so sharing your app with internal user is very straightforward for an example i am in my uh, make.powerapps.com and this is my sample app that i have created okay this app right now has no data connection as you can see here data is empty okay and it just has one label and you like to share that app with other users what you will do you'll go to the file after you save and publish, you will get this share button. Click that. This will take you to the sharing screen. On the right hand side, this is the window where you can share the app with other users. You can search for the user email address who you want to share. So for example, this is the one, this is one of the user in my tenant or in my organization. I can search for his name and then app is going to ask for the data permission now let's say you don't want to add a one user or single user at a time instead you want to share this app with everyone so there is an option called everyone and as you can see here this is saying everyone in the org name everyone in your organization so you can select that and this app will be shared with everyone okay the third option is you can also share the app with a group but the group that you are sharing with, it has to be a security enabled group. Okay. Now you might be wondering what is security enabled group. I have some link in this video so you can look and understand what are the different type of group that we can have. If you are the admin of your tenant, you can log into your tenant admin.microsoft.com. You can go to active teams and group and this is where you can see different type of group that you can create. You can create M365 group, you can create distribution list, you can create mail enabled security group and security group. So as you notice here, these two are security enabled group by default. So you can share your app with these groups. So for example, demo security group. So if I go back and search for demo security group, I can get that group and I can share the app with all the users that right now in the part of this group or in the future I'm going to add. If I go to the distribution list, this is not security enabled. So you cannot share your power app with the distribution list. You won't find this demo distribution list if you try to search here. Okay. And then we have Microsoft 365 group. These are the group that got created with the team site or if you're creating a Microsoft Teams. By default, these are not security enabled groups. So you need to make them security enabled group first, then you can share your app with these group. Okay. So these are the option to share your app. Now, because I'm not using any data connection in this app, sharing is very simple, right? I can search for the user and I can click share. And what's going to happen, this app will share with David, right? And if I log in with David, I'm trying to open the app in another window and I'm going to try to log in with the David. And David can exit this. Let's make changes to the app and let's try to understand what will happen as you start adding different type of data connection to this app. And we will start with one of the most common data source that we used and that is SharePoint. So I'm going to create a connection to the SharePoint site. Now if we go back, save the app, publish, now if I share, so as you can see here, it is showing the data connection that I have created and it is saying that make sure that the user that you are sharing with have access to this data. 
So what you need to do when you add a SharePoint as a data source, you need to make sure that the user that you are sharing the app with have access to this list library or the site that you are using in your app. And when the user is going to try to access this app, app going to ask the user that this app is using SharePoint as a data source. You, you should be creating a connection. The reason behind that, because what's going to happen when the user is going to try to access this app, they will be accessing the app and the data with their own ID. They are not using your connection. Okay, so let's try to access this app again and you will notice what I was saying. Okay, so once the David is trying to access this app now, he is getting this message that there is a SharePoint connection and you need to sign in. If you remember, I have not given David any access to the SharePoint yet. So let me go back, open the SharePoint site. Okay, and I'll go to the approval list that I'm using into my app. I'll go to the permission for this document library and I'm going to grant access. Click share. If I go back here and open the list, perfect, right? So now as a David, I have access to this SharePoint list that I'm using in my app. Let's go ahead and refresh this. You notice that has changed. If you are seeing those kind of error message where, where it's saying sign in, that means the user that is trying to access the app and the data source behind it doesn't have any permission or limited permission to your data source. So make sure they have the right permission. This message is saying simply that, okay, this app is using SharePoint and it has a connection. We want you to create connection with your ID so you can access the data as you click allow. So this is how you can share the SharePoint and this, this is the same way you can share the OneDrive also. Now let's go back. So we check the SharePoint. Now let's jump on to the second data source. The next I'm going to talk about the data wars. So I have this data wars table that I'm planning to use in my app. I created the connection. Let me save, publish and share. Now if you select the user that you are sharing the app, you see the data wars connection or data permission option is popping up there. But this time it is giving me a drop down. So sharing the data wars or sharing the app with the data wars connection, it's pretty straightforward because you can control the permissions and sharing the data as well as app from this screen only. So here what you can see, you are seeing all these different roles. Those are available in the data wars or you have created. You can select appropriate role and that's it. Then this data was table that you are using in your app will be shared with the user. Third commonly used data that we use is the SQL. So this is the another app that I have created and we're going to add a SQL connection here. So we'll go to the data, add data and search for SQL. Okay. It will ask you to use any existing connection if you have already created. If not, then you can create a new connection. I already have it, so I'm going to select one. Select the table that you want to use in your app and say connect. As soon as you do that, you will get a warning message here. You are using one or more implicitly shared connection. So when you create a SQL connection, you will get these four type of authentication. If you select as your AD or Windows authentication non shared, these are not implicit sharing. That means if you if you use these kind of authentication, then user needs to create their own connection. So they will get that message what we are getting for SharePoint and you need to manage security at the database level. So in the SQL server, you need to say, OK, these users can access the data. And when those users try to open this app, they will get the message. They will create the connection. If you're going to use the SQL Server authentication or Windows authentication, that means these are the implicit sharing. So as you share the app, you are also sharing the data connection. So be very careful when you are using these connection and the connection that I created just now actually using the Windows authentication. Now what happened now if I go to the file, save and try to share this app. You notice on the top, this is the message that you will get. Shared connection can be used to access the data source outside this app. So whenever you are using Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication in your SQL connection, be very careful because this can lead to some unauthorized or unwanted data access.
So this was the sharing your app with internal users. Now let's talk about external sharing. Let's say I created this app. It has been used by my internal team, but I like to extend this app to my customers. So how you can share an app with external users. The first requirement for external sharing, and that is just not for the Power App. If you are using SharePoint, OneDrive, or anything, or Teams, you have to have the B2B configuration done. I will add some link in this video if you want to read about more Azure B2B. So let's say B2B is done. You are allowed to share. How you can share the same app that we are working. So for that, I have another tenant that I'm going to use. Okay, so this is my other tenant, and I have this user. And what I want, I want to share my app with this, this user. The process is very similar. What we were doing with internal sharing, you will still go click on the share icon, and then you will try to put the email of that external user. As soon as you do that, you will get this message. To find that user, you need to make sure external user has to be the guest user in your tenant. Now, how this can be a guest user? There is two ways you can do it. You can request to add them as a guest user, or if you are already an admin, you can log into the admin center, go to the guest user, and add a guest user. And once you add this guest user here, uh, this, this user Rocky will receive an email, and as soon as he accepts that email, the account will be created. That's the one way. There is another way of inviting user to your tenant. If you are using SharePoint as a data source or OneDrive as a data source in your app, what you can do, you can actually share the SharePoint. I'm going to invite this user to access the SharePoint list. Okay, I'll click share. Good. If you notice, I shared, but that user has not been added here. It's not because until unless that user is going to accept your invitation, this process will not complete. So let me log in with that user. Okay, so I'm going to try to log in with this user now. So I logged in as Rocky and I have access to this approval list. Now if I go back to my Power App and if I try to share it again, now I can see the Rocky here, right? Because it has been invited and he accepted the invitation and his guest account should have been created into my admin center. And if you're admin, you can actually check that. And if I refresh this guest user list, you will see this user has been added automatically. Now, very similar how we did for internal user. I will select the user and click share. Let's copy the URL of our app and go to the login and see if Rocky can access this app or not. You will get this message. So what this message is saying is saying that the logged in user, that is Rocky in our case, doesn't have a valid Power Apps plan. First, I need, I'm going to my original tenant or the company which Rocky is part of. I'll go to the license and that's correct. I have not given him any Power App license. So if you are sharing the app with the external user, they should have a valid Power Apps license. Now the question comes in from where they should get the license. And the options are, they can get this Power Apps license from their original company. So if I enable this, either this plan or this plan, both have Power Apps or Office 365 license. So once I enable that, he should be able to access the app. That's the option one. The second option, your tenant admin can assign a license to the guest user. Okay, so if their company is not giving them Power Apps license, your company can give them a license and they can use that license to access this app. Okay, so let's take the, the first case. I'm going to original tenant and give the Power App license, okay? So if I go back to the login here and try to refresh, so now you can see he's getting the same message where you need to create the connection to the SharePoint using his own ID because this is how SharePoint connection work. Other connections that we have discussed like Data Wars and SQL follow the same logic as we have discussed. So if, if your app is using data words, you need to make sure that you are giving him the right role when you are sharing the app. If you are using SQL, 
you need to make sure that you are using the right authentication type number one and then giving this user right permission to the SQL. Now I'm going back to my tenant here. I'm going to remove the license. Okay, so let's talk about if the, the company of the user that you are sharing your app with doesn't have Power App license and they don't want to give or enable the Power App license for the user and you uh, decided that your company will give them Power App license. Okay, so how you can do it. If you're not Azure admin or tenant admin, you might not able to do this by yourself. So if you log into your admin.microsoft.com and if you look for that guest user, from here you don't have much options. Right. So for that, what you need to do, you need to log into Azure and access the Azure Active Directory. This is where you can find all the users. Okay, I'm going to search for the user that you're working on. So this is the user, right, Rocky? Select that user. Before you assign any license to this user, you need to make sure there is something called the location, the user's location. You need to make sure that it has a value. If you keep it empty, it will give you an error that this field is empty and you cannot assign a license without this field. So I'm going to update that. Click Save. Now under the, the Manage Information, you have License. Click there. Go to Assignments. And this is from where you can select the license type. Those are available in your tenant. And then give this user a particular license. If I go back to this user and try to access the app it's still going to work because instead of using the license from their own company they are using license from our company okay click allow so these are the two options that you have when you are sharing your app with the guest users this is all that i would like to share in this video thank you thanks for staying thanks for listening thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing keep watching keep learning thank you